Plants vs Zombies is one of the most popular tower defense games. The original game is a childhood classic for many, where it's about placing plants with unique abilities to defend the garden against waves of zombies. So today, I thought why don't we recreate it, but in the most basic game engine there is. Scratch, a beginner friendly game engine that is used to teach programming concepts to complete beginners and is mainly used to make simple children games. This is going to be a hard challenge, so what I'm about to attempt might be a big mistake. To keep things simple, we'll only be focusing on these plants and stage 1 with the zombies. This is a tile based game at its core, as the main focus lies on managing your defenses on a grid called Crazy Dave's Lawn. Pretty much all interactions are based on that grid, so we'll have to keep that in mind during the development process. I will use an ID type system to identify which square entities are on and the squares will be numbered from 1 to 35. So let's get into it. The most important part of the game is the lawn so let's start with that we take this background image and create an individual tile that fits it correctly next is to add all the tile positions to this list here this piece of code is then going to loop through that list going to every position in the list and then create a clone of our original block at that position so that's the first column but now in order to have varying y positions we'll create a second list that'll contain them great it fills up correctly uh well not correctly as it's still missing a piece let's just fix that there we go now we can create a mouse over effect by running the following code on all the clones of the tile it applies an opaqueness effect whenever your mouse pointer touches the tile and resets it whenever it doesn't nice now for the planting we'll create a variable that denotes what plant we're going to place here we wait until a plant is selected we check if the mouse button is being clicked and if the mouse is touching the square and we'll also check if the square is currently occupied we then indicate that our square is occupied and then pause this code until we're unoccupied again ready for a new plant to be placed next is to create a health variable for our sunflower Here's the result. Time to add the rest of the plants. So next, we're going to add the cards for all the plants to the HUD. Each card is going to check if it's off cooldown and if the player has enough sunlight to buy it when it's clicked. And if so, initiate the plant placer. Deduct the player's sunlight by its cost and restart its cooldown. For the cooldown, we'll have a black box that becomes gradually more transparent. The same thing was done for the pea shooter, repeater, and the walnut. Here's what it looks like. Besides planting, it should be possible to uproot the plants using a shovel for strategic rearrangements. Let's do that. We'll add the shovel as a sprite in the HUD and then check in the code for when it's going to be clicked on. We also gotta make sure it's still in the HUD for it to be picked up. Once it's been clicked, we fire off this event and play a sound and create a variable to keep track of where we're gonna be uprooting. We set it to zero at the start of the game in the plant's code, it'll continuously check if the plant square is being shoveled, and if it is, I delete the plant. Alright, Dave's last line of defense against the zombies is lawnmowers. So let's add those in now. First, we import this sprite and move it over to its resting position. We'll create this list to keep track of which lanes still have their lawnmowers. And once the lane the lawnmower is on, set to zero. The lawnmower moves forward and then destroys itself. Now, we'll have 5 lawnmowers spawn at the start of the game. Let's see if this works. Alright, cool. We'll do the getting set off and killing zombies part once there are zombies to get set off by and kill. Speaking of zombies, it's time to implement the zombies. This list was created which keeps track of the plants that are currently being eaten. Next, when a zombie reaches the end, we check if there is a lawnmower on his lane. The lawnmower is activated and another list is used to keep track of whether there are zombies on each lane, which we can then mark the current lane clear on. Here, we can use that which row die variable to kill all zombies on a lane. Next, if the zombie is hit by a P, we can temporarily increase his brightness for a hit effect. Here is how dying and taking damage is handled. If a zombie's damage, a transparency effect is applied. This was a pretty long part, so I'll quickly go over everything. All the animations, different zombie types, eating plants, plant health, and plant transparency effect, and peating shooting when there's a zombie on their lane, along with zombies taking damage and dying, was done. This was the result.
now we gotta add some kind of level system so we'll create a level with the waves of zombies when the game starts we can play a sound and do a text animation that says ready set plant just like the original game the game then gives you 50 starting suns and after 20 seconds a warning sound is played and the first zombie is spawned we then wait until he's dead and start spawning in more zombies every half a minute or so the game gradually spawns in waves of zombies and then waits till they are all killed. Eventually, the player reaches 25% progress and at that point, there's a huge wave with more zombies than usual. Once the player gets to the final wave and beats it, the game is won. Now, let's add in the progress bar. For this, we'll use the pen feature of Scratch. After tweaking some values, it now works properly. Now, we'll just add in this HUD element from the original game and use that. The game's basically done, but it still needs some refinements and important additions like a main menu we can bring in the main menu's background with the options gravestone and the start adventure option when the start adventure option is clicked i start the game and if it's being moused over we can switch its sprite to the highlighted version we should also play music in the main menu and when the game starts that's pretty important i play tested the game a bit and it seems good additionally i've got this you won screen and this you lost screen that's about it the game is in a working state so subscribe to see more